How you doing, guys? <clears throat> Dr. Thompson here, Exemplify Health Center, Wellness Way Affiliate, Yorkville, Illinois. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. Seven, I've been at the office straight for 12 hours. <laughs> oh my goodness. But I still have a little bit of energy left over for you wonderful people. So I hope you guys are having a great, uh, great day. Uh, hello to everyone. And I wanna go over uh, something, a lot of the lives I'll go over is, is just talking to patients and just getting ideas. Uh, a lot of questions that I might get from you know patients or messages and things like that throughout the day. So the title of today is is uh, customized nutrition. Hmm. Is there a diet, one diet that works for everyone? Okay. Uh, I will tell you this. We work a lot with diet. We work a lot with nutrition, right? I mean, when you think about nutrition, this is where you're providing the constituents and the building blocks for you to uh, start rebuilding your body. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, here's what a lot of people don't even realize is uh, people think, oh, you're, you're an immune system doctor. Nope. I, that's just one thing that we look at uh, with people. Uh, actually, one of my passions is uh, really has nothing to do with the immune system. I actually really love uh, the whole aspect of type 2 diabetes, the stress response, insulin, because we see this, we help people with this all the time, all the time. Um, so when it comes to nutrition, we're big on nutrition. And we always say, that's one of the first places that we start with people is we start with nutrition to provide the building blocks and the constituents for your body to be able to heal and be, your body to be able to repair. The other thing that we're doing is we're lowering a lot of stressors taking place inside the body, which is why, yes, we adjust people. When I adjust people, I've actually delivered over 200,000 adjustments. Um, and all you have to do is research neurology, research the spine, and research its effect on the brain. Uh, its effect on the brain because what it does is it de-stresses the brain. This is why a lot of people, when you're just adjusting and they're like, wow, I'm sleeping better, my digestive system's gotten better, I'm having better bowel movements. Like what kind of witch doctor quackery are you doing on me? And it's because guys, that when you have a nerve system that is at ease, you have a brain at ease and guess what? Where do all of your hormones originate from? Hypothalamus and pituitary gland, which is neurology and it was, it's within your brain. How amazing is that? That's why you have to be able to put everything together. So when people ask me about nutrition, um, a lot of times people will say, yeah, we, we, I'm a customize, I'll customize your nutrition. You know, dietitians do it, nutrition coaches and things like that. And um, a lot of times I just kind of shake my head because there is no diet that will work for everyone, okay? So when people say, you know, what do you think about paleo? What do you think about um, uh, the zone diet? What do you think about um, intuitive eating? <laughs> what do you think about uh, 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 carnivore diet or keto uh, diet? What do you think about all of that? The reality is, is that someone, like keto may work for one person. And um, so then they tell everyone, you need to do keto because it worked for me. Well. The problem is, is that it may have worked for you because you just happened to come on to keto and you had some blood markers and you had some things that would not preclude you from doing well with keto. I have seen people who've done a ketogenic diet and it absolutely wrecked them. It destroyed them. The reason why is, is ketogenic diet is a high fat diet. If you don't have a gallbladder, you're going to have a tough time, a really hard day doing a ketogenic diet or I'm a vegan, everyone needs to be you know, a vegan. There's gonna be people who aren't gonna tolerate that as well. So Dr. Nate, what kind of diet do you recommend? We recommend one that will be the best for the patient, and how do we know that? Based on testing, okay? So I will say this to my grave, because we have worked with so many different patients. Anytime that you're doing anytime, anything with nutrition, your nutrition first and foremost must be anti, non-inflammatory. It cannot inflame you, okay? It cannot inflame you. Inflammation trumps everything else. So you want to you want a weakened immune response? Be inflamed. Uh, you want a lot of joint pain? Be inflamed. You want your hormone response to go down? Be inflamed. So one of the first things that we work on is how can we start lowering an inflammatory stressor inside the body? Hopefully, guys, that makes sense. So how do we do that? Well, let me show you something. Here it is one of the first things that we do on a lot of people. When you guys see this right here, this is an IgG. We also did an IgE food allergy response, okay? So you see, what you guys see in the red? 
Oh my goodness, they're having an inflammatory response to all those things in the red. Look at those different types of foods too that you are seeing. Those foods, they, they mean something. They mean something, especially when you start seeing yeast, like yeast brewers, yeast and baker's yeast. Holy cow, that means something. You see this, they're not having an IgG immune system response to those foods. So guys, the first thing is don't eat the foods that are causing an inflammatory response, okay? Now we look into food allergies a lot more than just saying don't eat this and just start to eat that because food allergies will tell you so much, so much guys, about how you're breaking down your food. You start seeing a bunch of fat show up on your food allergy test, first thing that I'm saying is, what on earth is happening with your gallbladder? Because you can't break down the fats, you can't emulsify the fats, and you're getting a bunch of undigested food making its way down into the small intestine that can then, with any kind of gastrointestinal inflammation and damage to the barrier, actually cause it to start to leak through. Anybody who says, yeah, food allergy is not real, it just means you've had exposure to it, I want you to think about it. You're not supposed to get exposed to whole food proteins that are supposed to leak through a barrier. Does that make sense? So the, yes, the problem is, is a lot of people will look at their food allergies and say, oh my goodness, this is everything I'm eating. And I'm like, it's everything you're eating because everything you're eating is leaking through a barrier that's not supposed to allow all those foods uh, first. So when we talk about anything, it can be weight loss. We, we see a lot of people when it comes to weight loss, People say, what do I need to do to lose weight? I say, don't be inflamed, first and foremost. So one of the first things is, guys, is when it comes to customizing your nutrition, is you need to know what your food allergies are. And you need to figure out what are the foods that are causing an inflammatory response, and which is an IgG inflammatory response, but also figure out why do I have those specific food allergies? Do I have a problem with my stomach? Am I on an acid reflux medication? You're gonna have a lot of problems with, um, with uh, especially breaking down your proteins. Uh, how is my pancreas doing? Am I able to break down fats? Am I able to break down uh, carbohydrates? Because your pancreas is not just an endocrine organ, it's an exocrine, which means it releases pancreatic enzymes. But also, how is my liver doing? Because liver produces bile that is stored in the, um, stored in the gallbladder. When you have a gallbladder issue, it's not your gallbladder's fault, it's your bile metabolism's fault, and that's a, a product of liver function, okay? But the other thing is too is, uh, look actually at the types of foods that you have on a food allergy test, but also look at the number of foods. The more you have of foods, you always have to think, gosh, my barriers are really getting damaged, and it's causing more things to actually leak through to get exposed to the internal environment of the body. Body looks at that as an antigen. It, when it looks at it as an antigen, you're gonna have an immune response and you're gonna have an inflammatory response as well. So this is why when people are like, oh my gosh, I lost so much weight because I knew when I had food allergies and I started correcting the cause, I'm like, you didn't lose fat. What you lost is you lost swelling and inflammation and it's not uncommon for people to lose 10, 15, sometimes even 20 pounds because it's swelling that they actually will start to lose. People will say, oh my goodness, my face is not as puffy. My joints aren't as swollen. Um, I just start, you know, start to feel a little better. So anytime you're customizing nutrition, you wanna start with food allergies first. Um, but you, the, and I always say, inflammation is at the foundation of everything. <clears throat> so it's influent, uh, inflammation. Next thing that I would actually say is, is this. Let me bring another one. Uh, up because I want to show you an interesting, uh, an interesting uh, test that we actually had just read. So look at this. Number two, I would say, what's your insulin response? So what's your blood sugar? But even more importantly, what's your insulin response? I guarantee your doctor is not measuring this. Okay. So this is a lab that we had just gone over, and so you can actually see this person's got doesn't have great kidney function either. Look at his hemoglobin A1C, 90-day blood sugar average. That's pre-diabetes right there. This guy's not very old pre-diabetes, went to the doctor, they said you had high blood sugar, and they wanted to put him in his early 40s, they wanted to put him on metformin. And they said, well, because we wanna lower your blood sugars, and we feel that the metformin will make you lose weight, and if you lose weight, all your problems are gonna go away. And meanwhile, he's on five different meds over the last five years, I can't figure out why he's not doing very good. But look at this number right here, insulin, okay? Insulin levels, how many doctors have measured your insulin levels? Insulin should be, ideally, really at about three to five, you can see his insulin levels are at 17.8. Holy cow, it got high triglycerides too. So your insulin levels. 
What on earth are your insulin levels? Insulin is what actually is basically your fat storage hormone. The higher your insulin levels climb up, the harder time you're going to have controlling your blood sugar. The higher your insulin levels go up, it means you can't hear insulin anymore. It's no different. And so if you are chronically exposing your body and your cells to insulin, you become insulin resistant. It can't hear it anymore. Those receptors for insulin uh, do what's known as downregulate. They become less sensitive to it, which means you keep having to dump more and more insulin into your body in order to achieve the same result. Your body will keep up with it. Your blood sugar will be normal. Insulin will keep climbing up until it can't uh, keep up anymore. That's when you see your blood sugar starting to climb up. Because even the diabetes whole aspect, your doctor's missing it. They're diagnosing you already with blood sugar issues, and it has been going on for years and years and years. That's why they should be measuring insulin. So the next thing that you're doing as far as customizing your nutrition is this, is when you look at this, here's a person who should not be eating a lot of processed carbohydrates. Isn't that amazing? So they should not be eating a lot of processed carbohydrates. Should they be having any carbs? They actually could tolerate some because not all carbs are necessarily bad. You do need some carbs. You just don't need as many carbs as what people think they do, okay? And in fact, a lot of times I'm like, you need just enough carbs to actually fuel your workout, which is probably only maybe three or 400 calories a day that are coming from carbs. But they all should be very slowly absorbed. So there's a difference in even the quality of the carb. Guys, a food is not a food, is that, you know, food is just not benign. There's a hormonal response to it. So anybody that says that a calorie is just a calorie and all I need to do is just uh, eat less, they are missing the complete point of the inflammatory role in food and then also the insulin response that they're getting from specific sugars, okay? So that's how also you can customize nutrition. So for this guy I said here, I said, you gotta stop eating the processed carbs. He's like, yeah, I know. And I said, well, well, we'll let you have some sugar, but here's the specific things that we want you, type of sugars to cut out. Here's the type of sugars we're gonna say, okay, you can have those things specifically in moderation. And guess what? I'll even look at markers that are related to the liver, and I will even tell people, I don't even want you having fruit because of the fructose. Because remember, the fructose got, has to be metabolized at the liver. Some nutritionists just lose their cookies when we say that, and they take it completely out of context. Because I'm saying, I'm looking at labs, what are you looking at in order to have that opinion? Doesn't mean we do it for the rest of your life. We don't want any, any other stressors taking place on the liver, and you can live your whole life without eating a piece of fruit. So vegetables are gonna be way more, impro, uh, more important than um, actually fruit. But here's where it gets even better. Now watch this. So how do you can, can you even customize it even more? I'm gonna show you something. We showed this, uh, this is a different one, but this is a stool test, okay? So we did a stool test and so we measure their poop. What you see here is you say, well, well, how their digestive organs are doing. So how the pancre pancreas doing with the uh, release of elastase? Uh, how about their products of protein? Um, are they able to break down protein? Okay, so are they breaking their protein? That comes from stomach acid. And then look at this, fecal fats. If it's very increased when you, when you see it on a test, they probably are having gallbladder issues. But in this case, this woman, she's not eating, eating enough fat. Imagine that, okay, low fat diet. So you can see inflammation is doing really good. She's got some dysbiosis or, or um, some bacterial overgrowth that's taken place. Um, not actually too bad. She's got no infection, but when you look at this, you can say, oh my goodness, look at this. This woman, you can see, she needs to increase her short chain fatty acid production and her, her uh, butyrate concentration. This is a need for prebiotic support, okay? So um, when people say, oh my goodness, I can tell just from looking at this test, hey, listen, you need to, uh, you need to be eating more fat, okay? Um, and number two, you need to be consuming more prebiotic fiber, okay? Um, when people say, I take a probiotic, I'm like, great, how do you know you need it? So in this case, I don't even recommend a probiotic. She doesn't need it. Why would she take something that she will get very little benefit from, okay? Do we give uh, probiotics? Yes, we do. When we know that we need it, and in fact, a lot of the probiotic that I recommend is actually a yeast-based probiotic, uh, and that has to do actually with testing, but because um, most people do have a lot of yeast overgrowths, 
Uh, but this whole idea of just tossing a bunch of probiotics in there, guys, you can even develop an overgrowth uh, based on probiotic supplementation. So we do have probiotics here. When we do, boy, we really hammer it with 100 billion CFUs, <laughs> sometimes 200 billion. But how do we know? They need it. It has to do, obviously, with testing. So they'll see on testing that they'll have an extreme need for microbiome support. Um, but a lot of times, some people, they'll need uh, some microbiome support after we start handling some issues that are causing some overgrowth and things like that. But in this case, what does this woman need? She actually needs a lot of, um, of insoluble fiber, some resistant starches. Um, so inulin fiber, some chicory root would be beneficial for her, some uh, uh, cooked and cooled potatoes, you know, like a, a potato starch. Um, a cot, even like dandelion root can help her as well. So, I mean, so when we look at this, we're saying, hey, look it, here's your food allergies. But not only that, no, you don't need to be on this probiotic. But what you do is you need to actually provide the food for the microbiome that's already there in order to metabolize, be able to produce short uh, chain fatty acids. And those things actually will turn around and it will help if even estradiol metabolism and will even help with blood sugar regulation. So I can even see on a test, oh my gosh, look at the reason why you can have problems with your blood sugar actually can be traced back to your microbiome. So that's what customized nutrition is, okay? Customized nutrition is actually saying, hey, this is how you should eat. This is exactly how you should eat. This is actually how you should eat in relation to inflammation. This is how you should eat in relation to um, your insulin levels. And this is actually how you should eat in order to help with a healthy gut, a healthy microbiome. And it becomes way more complicated than just saying, hey, what do you take? Well, I take uh, some vitamin C, some vitamin D, some uh, quercetin, uh, maybe a little bit of zinc, some probiotics, and I just dump a whole lot of stuff in. And, you know, I hopefully it works. And it may work for you, but it's no different than just, you know, a blind squirrel that finds a nut, okay? So we don't want to be the blind squirrel that finds a nut. We want to be sniper specific and know exactly what it is for you. We don't want to recommend anything more. We don't want to recommend anything less. We want to recommend exactly what you need. And here's the good thing. As you get better, we always will take people off. I had a conversation with a guy today is, yeah, he had probably a list of nine or 10 things that I want him to take. And I said, listen, if you're taking the same thing a year from now, then what I want you to do is, is I want you to fire me if you're doing the same things or I'll fire you because either way, you're not either following through or I'm not serving you very well, okay? How many of you need to fire your doctor right now? <laughs> and I tell people, if I don't do an amazing job for you, then please fire me. Um, because you know I'm not gonna have you hanging around. I'll help you find someone who I think will do a better job, okay? So customized nutrition, is it possible? Yes. Can you, from testing, say, hey, can you do a ketogenic, would you benefit from a ketogenic diet? Some people, yes, I have put them on. Some people, I've actually said, you need to eat way more. Please stop restricting your calories because your adrenal glands are suffering and so is your thyroid function is suffering. So some people, we had them eat, small people, 115 pounds. I said, I want you to eat 3,000 calories for the next eight weeks. And they say, what? And they come back, you know, eight weeks later and they say, I feel so much better. And I said, well, that's because you've been starving yourself. And just remember, you starve yourself, you start to go into starvation mode, metabolism goes down, adrenal gland function will go down, thyroid function will start to go down. You guys have to understand everything works together, okay? So can you customize nutrition? Absolutely. How do you know? You test, okay? It's a lot different than just saying calories in, calories out. There is no difference because just remember, how do you know? You only can know through testing. How do you know? You can only know through lab work. And that's why, you know, working with a Wellness Way doctor, they can give you, tell you exactly what you need to do. Guys, even when it comes to exercise too, I own a gym and I've told people who were members at our gym, I want you to stop working out for a while. So I want you to cancel your membership you know, for the next two to three months, let's get some things under control and then you'll go back and this time you'll be even better, okay? So I, I will always have the best interest of the patient. The number one priority is to get the person better. That is always the number one priority and it should be your doctor's priority too. If they can't help you, then they should work like heck 
to try to find you someone who can start to help you rather than to say it's in your head take a take an antidepressant um, or um, listen I'm just going to give you this medication I hope I hope you just go away which those are the types of people that we're seeing you know quite a bit in our office so guys if you got value from this please make sure that you share this about customizing nutrition and yes I will say yes a paleolithic more you know more of a diet is going to work better a carnivore diet would work better for you um, a, a vegan diet for some people would work better um, just based on food allergies alone so everyone is is going to be different but don't fall into the trap where someone says you need to eat this way uh, and there is no other way because remember the only way to know is to be able to test right so guys have a great night make sure you please share this video and uh, share it with other people so I didn't plan on going live but I felt a little bit inspired and hopefully I enlightened you and I inspired you as well. So if you found value to this, make sure that you uh, share this video uh, as well. So guys, I hope you have a great night. I am uh, out of here 12 hours straight uh, at the office and uh, looking forward to uh, finally getting some food for today. All right, guys, appreciate all of you and uh, we'll talk to you soon.